Hey folks, welcome back to Military Forces Unleashed, where we tear apart the myths, expose the failures, and celebrate the real engineering nightmares that somehow fly. Today we're diving into a story that's equal parts epic, tragic, and absolutely mind-blowing. It's the kind of tale that makes you question if it's real or just something out of a Top Gun reboot. We're talking about a plane so advanced it doesn't just see the battlefield, it thinks for it. A flying brain with radar eyes, digital nerves, and the ability to command an entire air war from 40,000 feet. It's used by allies, feared by adversaries, and completely ignored by the U.S. Air Force. So what is it? And why has the most powerful Air Force on the planet decided to keep flying something that should have been retired before most of its pilots were born? Picture this. It's 2024. You're in charge of one of the most advanced militaries in history. Your jets cost $150 million each. Your drones think before they shoot. Your satellites see through clouds. And your main radar plane in the sky? A flying museum piece from the 1970s with a disco era radar dome spinning on top and software that crashes if you sneeze near the console. Meanwhile, a modern, proven, off-the-shelf replacement sits on the runway, fully operational, battle-tested, and ready to go. And the U.S. Air Force? They're not buying it. Let's be honest, the E3 Century had a good run. Launched in the 1970s, Cold War and full frost, Soviets sending bear bombers over the Arctic like it was a Sunday drive, the U.S. needed eyes above the clouds. So, Boeing slapped a giant radar dome on a 707 and called it the E-3 Century, aka the rotisserie in the sky. And for decades, it worked. It was the quarterback of American air power, calling plays from Desert Storm to Afghanistan, directing fighters, juggling airspace, surviving on sheer reputation, and duct tape. But as Anthony Beaver would remind us, victory isn't won by machines, it's won by systems. And by the 2020s, the E3 system was falling apart. Its radar can't reliably see low-flying cruise missiles or stealthy drones. Its avionics, so outdated, the Air Force admitted in 2021 they were 3D printing obsolete circuit boards because the original parts haven't been made since the Fresh Prince was on TV. They tried to fix it. The Increment 4045 program burned $2 billion, delivered nothing canceled in 2022 like a bad Netflix series. So the USAF did what any rational military would do, looked at what its allies were already flying, and found the E-7 wedge tail. Now this isn't just an upgrade, this is a generational leap. Based on the Boeing 737-700, same airframe your cousin used to get the Cancun, but stuff with so much computing power, it's basically Air Force One's nerdy cousin who runs the Pentagon's Wi-Fi. Its radar? The MISA system, multi-role electronically scanned array. No spinning dish, no moving parts. Just solid state panels along the spine, scanning 240 degrees both ways, tracking over 180 targets at once, including threats flying under 100 feet. It's like giving the battlefield x-ray glasses with a PhD in air combat. It's networked, it's digital. It speaks F-35, speaks drone, speaks ground station, and it's already flying with Australia since 2009, the UK since 2023, and now Turkey and South Korea. In red flag exercises, the E-7 didn't just beat the E-3, it embarrassed it. Detected threats earlier, managed more fighters, survived attacks the E-3 wouldn't even see coming. So naturally, the USAF said, nah, we'll build our own. Let's be real. The E-7 wedge tail doesn't drop bombs. It doesn't dogfight. But in modern air warfare, it's the guy who runs the entire game. In 2015, RAAF wedge tails flew over ISIS-held Iraq, coordinating F-A-18s, F-16s, drones, tankers, all at once. No friendly fire, no confusion. One US pilot called it like having God on the radio. Fast forward to 2023, the UK used its new E-7s to spot Russian bear bombers over the Baltic 300 miles out, 
before ground radar even warmed up. South Korea, they now use it as the nerve center of their missile defense, tracking low-flying North Korean cruise missiles the old systems couldn't touch. And here's the kicker. American F-35s and F-22s already rely on E-7 data, from Australian, British, and Korean jets. But the U.S. Air Force? Still flying E-3s with a mission-capable rate under 50%. The wedge tail? Over 85%. So yes, the U.S. is using the brain, but refusing to buy the body. Let's cut through the noise. The E-7 is better. It's proven, it's cheaper, and it's already flying with allies. So why isn't the U.S. Air Force using it? Because in 2022, they launched the Battle Management Program, a competition to replace the E-3. Boeing offered the E-7. Northrop Grumman offered a Gulfstream G-550. And in 2023, the USAF canceled the whole thing. Not for technical reasons, but because they wanted a clean sheet design. Let that sink in. They killed a working, off-the-shelf solution to build something that doesn't exist yet. Never mind that the E-7 is built in Oklahoma with American workers and tech. This wasn't about capability. It was about contracts, lobbying, and ego. As Eric Lipton would say, this is textbook defense waste. A system that works gets rejected for a fantasy. Yes, the wedge tail has limits. Not stealthy, needs escorts. Turkish pilots report radar clutter in mountains. But the E-3 can't see low-flying drones, can't talk to F-35s. Its software is so old, they 3D print parts just to keep it alive. And the USAF says a replacement might not come until 2032. So until then, they'll keep flying a Cold War relic, not because it works, but because the bureaucracy won't admit it lost the war. So, where does this leave us? The E-7 Wedgetail is, without question, the most advanced airborne command platform on the planet. It's flying, it's fighting, it's working. Every major U.S. ally Australia, UK, South Korea, Turkey, is buying it. The U.S. military relies on its data. And yet, the U.S. Air Force won't field it. This isn't a tech failure. It's a failure of leadership. It's institutional inertia, the kind James Fallon's warns about, where pride and process trump performance. It's contractors pushing for billion-dollar blank slates, it's generals betting on vaporware over something already saving lives over the Korean Peninsula. And while they debate, the E-3 keeps falling apart, literally. One crashed in 2021 from engine failure. Another was grounded in 2023 with structural cracks. The wedge tail isn't magic, but it is ready. And sometimes the boldest move in war isn't a bold strike. It's admitting you were wrong and buying the damn plane. So, tell me, should the USAF finally pull the trigger? Or do we need a tragedy to wake them up? Drop your take below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. Because next week, we're exposing the Pentagon's most expensive toilet, a $20 billion warship that can't aim its guns. Huge thanks for watching all the way to the end. If you made it this far, you're not just a viewer. You're part of the Military Forces Unleashed Inner Circle, where we don't glorify war, we dissect it. Share this with that friend who still thinks the F-14 is the greatest thing since afterburners. And if you want more stories like this, from ghost drones to submarines that never existed, smash subscribe and hit the bell. Until next time, stay sharp, stay skeptical, and never trust the official story.